Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the World Class Championship Wrestling Review Series here on Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channel. And we move into the month of October. Actually, I've, I've watched up through the last show of the year. have not started 86 yet, but that's what's going to go up today, hopefully. If not tonight. But anyway, uh, three first run matches here. Jim Powell and David Peterson. Peterson is primarily a guy in the AWA and finally comes down here to get some work. Really basic match, very simple, um, kind of a skippable match, actually. Powell isn't here too much, terribly longer, maybe another month or two at most. So he must have been a guy who either didn't have a passion for the business or finds another place to work. He's not here very long. Uh, Powell does take over early on the newcomer Peterson, and uh, we see a couple of, you know, shots in the midsection. Uh, Peterson tries to do the babyface stuff, uh, stays on the arm, arm bar and the like, and then we see Powell take back over with clubbing shots, forearms to the back of the neck and the like, and um, it is Powell who, for the most part, is the dominant guy in the situation, and a big back body drop by Peterson. Peterson, again, a guy who really doesn't necessarily find a full-time gig, but finds enough work as, uh, I guess, two steps above an enhancement talent to be impactful throughout the next several years. Anyway, back suplex by Peterson, one, two, and three on the roll-up of the back suplex. Uh, then we move into Gino Hernandez and Kevin Von Erich. We've seen this match a million times before. Very much, very little is different here. Um, actually, see, see Hernandez with a, um, <clears throat> with a, a brush of the hair, so to speak, and uh, that's where we go here. Um, you know, Kevin it takes a few shots here and there, and a uh, very basic early match. There's a lot of stalling by Hernandez early. It's really sad that he passes away in 86. That's that's probably going to be, I would say, at the time, one of the most devastating things followed up with Kerry, Kerry Von Erich's motorcycle accident being another devastating thing. 86 really seems like it's going to be a snake bit year for world class. Anyway, uh, the uh, head scissors now is, is done primarily by... Hernandez, and they work the head scissors bit for several minutes, um, kind of rolls through, tries to get to his feet, sleeper attempt by <clears throat> um, by Hernandez. Hernandez then moves in through into a little bit quicker pacing, but, I mean, there's there's a, a, a choke out attempt by uh, Von Erich. Uh, two minutes later, three minutes later, goes to the body scissors, and, I mean, they get so much, one thing I will say, both of these guys get so much out of, you know, working a match. They probably do 10 minutes with two or three high spots. Uh, nothing really major. Anyway, Kevin goes for the claw, gets the claw hooked in. Um, and then, amazingly, uh, Hernandez is able to break free of the claw. And then, you know... Um, there is some cheating involved, but um, we we do see that uh, there is a victory thanks to uh, the interference of Chris Adams for uh, none other than Gino Hernandez. We then move to um, Hernan Chris Adams and Scott Casey being your, uh, I guess, main event of the program. Uh, that's a really odd main event since, you know, Case. I mean, Casey has done now singles championship stuff. I, I get that. But it's just weird to think that three months before he was barely an enhancement talent and in the latter half of this year, he moves into being really one step below a main eventer. Amazing how now in WWE... You've got guys that are on the roster for five and six years who haven't had a sniff of the main event, sometimes longer, 
And now it's like six months, and you get guys, you know, sniffing at the main event, which I think is really good. Uh, Adams breaks the match down with a rear chin lock, uh, puts weight on him for several minutes, um, you know, forces him to carry the weight and the like, and, uh, I mean, they get like four minutes out of a, out of a reverse chin lock, if, if not longer, which, I mean, today's guys could do it, but they don't know how, and I, you know, a lot of people say, well, in different time, and, and the crowd wouldn't sit for it. They would if the holds look, looked real enough. If guys knew how to fight and ladies knew how to fight out of holds, uh, people would sit for longer holds. And UFC shows this, you know. Obviously, everyone's going to say, well, they know wrestling isn't real. But if you're doing it right, you're making them wonder. And that's the thing that I think is another lost art. Anyway, hard uppercut by Casey coming out of things. Um, they are covered in sweat just off the chin lock, so that, again, proof that they're really working the holds now. Um, Casey is able to take him back down, him being Adams. Adams is unimpressed by all of this. He manages to um, get the hold back before falling victim to a body slam. Uh, you know, the ho- the hold continues for the next couple of minutes. This is a shorter uh, episode than normal by about three or four minutes, and I, maybe they lost some footage, or maybe they, um, you know, didn't get everything taped they want. Maybe they had to cut a segment, I don't know. But suffice to say, usually episodes run about 45 to 46 minutes. This one runs just over 40 minutes, so... Uh, something gets lost in translation here. And I think that's also a contributing factor as to why the matches might run longer. Um, we do see a bulldog uh, by Casey, which should be a finish, but is not. Um, Casey back up a few minutes later with an abdominal stretch. The abdominal stretch allows them to carry through the next several minutes and... Um, needless to say, when Adams turns things back his way, he is unsatisfied with only getting a near fall and not a victory. And, uh, uh, we see one, two, and, you know, several more pinfall attempts by Adams. Adams is a guy who really kind of is, is hanging in there. And, um, the match is near a close, and the referee and Adams are not friends with each other uh, near the end of this. Uh, Adams takes the loss, complains about getting his hair pulled, complains about, you know, what could happen, actually. Uh, Adams goes into his own tights, grabs some powder. Uh, The powder explodes in the face, and uh, the referee uh, says no to the powder. He sees the powder, disqualifies Adams, and uh, that is how uh, Scott Casey gets the victory here this week. We'll be back with more action right after this.